Good morning, Dale. Good morning, Paul. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah, back in the office today, so I've been working from home. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm back in the office after a sort of a two to three days uh, out on the road uh, work-wise, which is uh, great uh, to get back into that sort of swing of things. A bit, a bit tiring, but uh, good, good all the all the same. Yeah, I've, I kind of lost, lost track of what day it is. At the moment. It seems to be <laughs> a bit like that. It's um, people on holiday and different things at the moment, but catching up. Yeah. But, um, but it was great to uh, great to see you at one of our barbecue events in the summer, the first barbecue event we had, which was great for the networking. Uh, so I sort of met you on and off a few times at various networking events. Uh, for those people, lots of people watching them obviously will know you. Um, but if they if they don't, if you'd like to little, explain a little bit about the kind of work you do and, and who you work with, that'd be great. Okay, but as I say, my name is Dale Edwards. I've um, I've had my own consultancy called DJ Consulting for over three years now. But before that, I used to be CEO of Somerset Chamber of Commerce. Um, prior to that, I used to be a uh, ch chief executive of uh, a charity in Devon, Extra Leukemia Fund. And before that, uh, corporate finance in the city. So I've had quite a varied career. And what I do with DJ Consulting is provide uh, strategic advice to uh, businesses, not-for-profit organizations in a variety of areas. So um, because of my sort of generic and wide background of experiences, I can provide that sort of those sort of solutions, whatever those solutions might be. Okay, great. So it's nice to have that set of variety of different businesses, different challenges that it, that it brings up. And sort of talking of challenges, how's the last 18 months been for you in the businesses, that, or you personally, but also the businesses riding the kind of the COVID sort of, you know, how that's been roller coaster? I think uh, for, for myself and like many other businesses, uh, when uh, COVID sort of uh, took hold, as it were, um, it was a, a big shock and there was a lot of sort of worry about what was going to happen. Uh, with some of my contracts, they were dialed down as far as the, the time which I was uh, required to be working with them, partly because what I do is face to face. So therefore, all that was taken away. So we adapted and started to build that sort of uh, workflow up in that respect. Certain other contracts which I'd looked to start in sort of the April of 2020 or May 2020 were either put on the back burner or cancelled full stop because uh, it wasn't going to be practical to do that. So I had quite a lot of free time, uh, to say the least, um, uh, it comes sort of the early part of summer. Okay, right. I say it's interesting finding out how it's uh, you know impacted different people. So that time mm. you had, how did you use your time? What did you learn or teach during that time for yourself? I think, first of all, um, I, I wasn't very well, and I'm fairly certain I did have COVID because they, they weren't doing the testing at that per, per, uh, moment in time. I, I'm fortunate enough to have a good garden, and, I, and it gave me the opportunity to get on top of that garden. So utilising my time, getting out into fresh air, um, doing things which I've been putting off. So therefore, it helped me from a, a mental health perspective doing that sort of physical activity the weather last summer was absolutely brilliant compared to this summer without <laughs> question um so that helped me from a personal perspective but what i also did i was uh, on a random basis um phone two or three people every single week just you know business contact to say touch base how are you nothing to talk about business whatsoever and to see that how they were feeling and also it, um, they asked me questions and we realized that we were in the same boat so we weren't alone uh, in that respect because a number of my contacts like many others uh, were put on furlough so therefore they were happy to have that conversation um, and it just helped just uh, keep my brain going in that way yeah no, that's great i think it's um yeah it's been it's been strange to sort of hear how yeah, it's been great how people have had not been able to connect face to face. But like you say, it's, it's to yeah. think about those conversations you usually don't have because of the you know, the day to day you know work in business week and things. So it's been really mm -hmm. important to also harness those conversations, hasn't it, and, and take that forward. Absolutely, and I think um, I was trying to do as many conversations as possible. And once uh, the opportunity came to start meeting a few people, I did do that on a on a one on one basis. You know. Um, in a pub garden or go for a walk or something like, along those lines where we where both parties felt safe secure etc and you know it was welcomed by a lot of people some people were obviously quite reticent for obvious reasons um but it, i sort of gauged who those type of people would be 
but still made contact with those to make sure that they were they were okay because I know some businesses, in, particularly in the hospitality sector, were, were going through absolute turmoil. So therefore, it was just okay. Can I help you in any way? Not expecting any sort of reward for that, just because I know them. I have built relationships with them over a period of time, and I just wanted to say hello. No, that's great. I think it was a time for like say these relationships and network to step up, and it did feel that you mm. had sort of. Although we were kind of isolated, maybe say stuck at home, it didn't f- feel like you were on your own if you had that support network. It was so important that you build up that. Um, yeah, um, and it was absolutely great and, uh, to do that. And actually going to um, your, um, your networking event recently was the first full networking event I'd actually been to probably since March 2020. Uh, so... It was a bit surreal. It was great fun. The weather played its part, yeah. and to know if you could, if, if you knew contacts, which which is always a bonus. Uh, it was great. Yeah. I mean, even had your shorts on. Sounds good. I know, I know. I still got my shorts on, but um, I, I, I yesterday and the day before, I actually wore a shirt and some longs. Probably I can count on one hand the times I've worn long trousers or jeans, etc. Since April this year, so therefore, yes, it was a, a bit of a surreal moment doing that. Great. And and sort of the working practices. And I mean, I, I heard from somebody yesterday in my network that's like, well, I've, I've been working from home the last 18 months. And, uh, and now I'm looking, I'm missing that, you know, that camaraderie, those water cooler moments, chatting to people. Mm. How do you think um, with businesses now slowly returning? I know my, my brother-in-law, he works in Canary Wharf. I think he's not mm. going back till September where he's going to be doing two days a week. I think they spent something like £30 million on the, the complex he worked at. Yeah. And then and then COVID hit. Um, so he's been working from home, but going to ease that back. What do you think the, the long-term sort of impact will be or change for businesses going forward? I think this has been an opportunity for many businesses to have a reset, to think, okay, is this the way we want the business to go going forwards? Because a lot of businesses uh, get caught up in the day-to-day activity and quite often don't think of the longer term. What are the, is the business going to try and achieve in its aims and objectives, etc., going forwards? So a lot of businesses have taken the opportunity to reset and re-engineer their business. And some are going into a more sort of what I call a dynamic um, employment environment where you've got that flexible working, um, but also having the, the opportunity to call people back in into you know, teams meetings or you know, um, line manager reports, et cetera. Because I do think the, the connectivity is vital for business, uh, business people to, to just to connect with people. And also ideas are sort of, formed by just talking to people you, you may have a conversation about a specific topic and within half an hour that conversation's gone off of the tangent and actually a better solution's come out as a result of that face to face rather than straight virtual no that's that's a really important point and so mm. it's just that trying to yeah just having general chats and talking to people and talking through like, like say ideas ideas come up yeah. i guess that's a more hybrid way of working because because the meetings are great when obviously online like this when it saves yeah. commuting time and, and makes more business more efficient because you can have an agenda that you stick to a time limit to particular things but certainly yeah those 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 meeting up and, and in the room and and it's and the, well the, and also the just you're more relaxed your you know tone yeah. of voice and your body language that's some of the things that have so it's i guess it's been it's been a good substitute that we we've had this um during this time and it's just taken that forwards and taken the pluses Without question, you know, if if this uh, lockdown scenario had happened, say, five years ago, you know, the the platforms such as Zoom, Teams, WebEx, etc., weren't really in existence, and the broadband connectivity wasn't there to do it anyway. Around particularly parts of uh, rural England, anyway, Um, and even in the cities, there's some black spots as far as um, you know broadband connectivity. So I'm so glad in that respect that the connect broadband connectivity. And also the platforms are available to do that because it really has helped. And I think it has changed businesses. You know, some of the clients I was working with, uh, one is just Clark Wilmot, a law firm. They've got seven offices around the UK. Yes, I will probably still go to them, but I won't go to them as much as I used to do that uh, because we don't necessarily need to and we can be more efficient around that. But particularly when you're looking at uh, creating new activities, new opportunities, you know, that, that buzz of being around people, uh, getting input really does help rather than just having the, the the virtual face because the thing is you've got the the challenge of the protocols who should speak first who should be second etc <laughs> the time delays the buffering and all that sometimes it can become a little bit stilted 
No, absolutely. And it's funny, I met her with a, a client that I, I, I picked up during lockdown and we met at the, the barbecue event that you were at. Yeah. And it, it was funny, it's two people now going, oh, I didn't know how tall you were because, of course, they only see me sat down. Yeah, I know. And you know, that's a bit that's a bit strange, really, in, in that regard. But what I've, what I've really enjoyed is being newfound confidence for people that have, have had to embrace mm. technology, particularly like Zoom and, yeah. and, and online, as, as, and started doing videos and thinking, like, actually stepping out of my comfort zone because we we were all all talking to each other in our homes and you know the cats would walk in and whatever the dog would bark and and it kind of humanizes a bit or put us on a level playing field that we all felt a bit more relaxed i think and we were all in it together kind of spirit um but i've, I've been really impressed with people taking on video and embracing that to open them up to a more you know show themselves really because i think some people were a bit hold back don't they on showing some things that maybe they show a little bit more of who they are and what they're about really yeah, I've I've I've, um, I've noticed from speaking to a number of businesses, looking at their their communication channels, uh, you know, they are looking to adopt uh, videos on their websites now. They didn't think about that before COVID, even though potentially the technology was there to do it. But they but they they're seeing how the the power of videos and blogs, etc., can actually uh, resonate not just internally, you know, within the, the the workforce, but also externally, showing a slightly different side to the business, uh, you know, from a from a cultural perspective, from a values perspective, etc. So I think a lot of businesses have looked at their values a lot more because more one thing with uh, with lockdown, people being forced to. Were, um, be at home. Uh, fortunately, I live in a, a lovely setting, and a lot of other people do as well. Others may not so, but they've had an opportunity to think about the environment a lot more and respect the environment because obviously emissions went down quite considerably, um, and they have still stayed down to a large extent. But that's that is given a newfound confidence about okay, I respect the environment. I don't want to do this commute because it's damaging to the environment. And then I can be more effective as well by not having this big commute. No, that's a so that's a really important point on that. And it's um it's funny, I got a, a kickback from my insurance company was I wasn't expecting from uh <laughs> from yeah. uh, not, not being on the road so much. But um talking about values, it's it's really really interesting because I was reading a, a about quite a big company um and how the, the values so particularly brand values you put up there is the kind of stuff, the fluffy stuff that businesses put mm -hmm. up there, which will lead on to sort of corporate social responsibility that I know you're, you're heavily involved in. Um, yeah. But it, it was having, having like a, a load of nice words on a sheet and not carrying that through your, uh, you know, your actual um, culture of your company. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of really showed a lot of, lot of companies where there was gaps or they needed to go back, like you said, go back and readdress things. So mm -hmm. I wonder about your, your work in the, corporate social responsibility and how how who you work with and how that little bit more about that if you would please i suppose uh, that my work within that set that 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 field almost came by accident because it wasn't by design that i started to get involved in corporate social responsibility it was as a consequence of lockdown and people you know reaching out to me and there's lots of challenges over people's mental health and making sure people were okay at home working from home because some people found it very very challenging mm -hmm. um, either because they didn't have the facilities or there's too much going on within their home life uh, to be to be able to work effectively and so I got involved in that by sort of by accident but because of my experience working as for a charity a membership based organization running businesses I've got a good understanding of the people issues in it from a general perspective, which need to be to be considered, about community, about the environment, and because some of the work which I do with um, with Clark Walmart is around green energy. So I've gathered a lot of new uh, sort of um, knowledge over the last sort of 12, 18 months within green energy. Yes, I, I was aware of nuclear energy because of my time at uh, Somerset Chamber, um, but it was sort of developing the concept that, okay, this is going to become a lot more important going forwards uh, for business to win new business. Um, so yes, I've been helping one one company in particular, which is Data Interiors, which is a London-based uh, workplace furniture solutions consultancy dealership, um, and with uh, with another person created a brand spanking new corporate social responsibility program, which was launched within only a few months. But yes, we took it back to the values, the vision, et cetera, to make sure it all resonated, it all fitted, it all gelled, become, to ensure that it was authentic to that business. That is a key thing, to be authentic. And so therefore you can communicate that to your clients, your, your prospects, also your supply chain as well. So I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it because one environment has risen up the agenda 
quite considerably, and obviously in recent days, the big UN report, etc. And the focus about the importance of having committed, happy, productive people within your workplace. So therefore, I can see this um, social responsibility um, work stream growing exponentially over the next sort of decade. No, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. And I think it, it highlighted say, the need to, to keep how cool the people are to your any to any business, aren't they? That the, the, say clients, suppliers, the workforce, yeah. But understanding their needs, but also that they're on board with their their part, they're living and breathing the, the vision of the company. They're the you know walking embodiment of that, as well as the supply chain. Let's yeah. say it goes beyond something that's a document that's written down and put away. It's something that's continually updated, isn't it? And work in progress. Absolutely, it has to have full support, and this is one of the things which I did with day two with this other uh, other chap called Guy. We actually um, made sure that the the whole team were involved in the process, and you know we created a um, as a result a well being team, and also a green team within the business, and that was for them to take ownership of some of the um, day to day of. Um, sort of actions as a result with with, with boundaries etc um, which is sort of managed by the senior management team so having the, the, those individuals who are excited passionate about those sort of issues um, may make sure makes it easier for it to be adopted and sort of uh, communicated both internally and to their client base yeah that's great it's, it's good to see it's lots of positives that people things that you said have come out unexpectedly that you then steered in a certain way and I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I've always been one to look at opportunities, but I, I've got this passion about green energy, hence doing what I've done at uh, Clark Walmart. Um, and working in, in the charity sector is more about the people side of things. So therefore, it's I've always had the adage, if you are to be successful, you have to believe in what you do and you have to have a passion for what you do. Um, because that is the, the key elements to success because you need to be authentic in what you actually do. Uh, absolutely. And I think the thing you said there, spot on the opportunities, be able to adapt. And those businesses that haven't done that, you know, the need to look back and, and see where they can make those changes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some some businesses I spoke to were, were B2B in the past and they suddenly had to branch out B2C and the business took off. And they thought, well, why, why haven't we considered this before? You know, and I think... It, it gave some people the time to reflect, take a step back. And I know that when, you know, we do work in the marketing sector, and of course, a lot of people just let the dust settle, the initial dust settle, to see what happened. Yeah. And then, you know, we work, I worked with companies who wanted to rebrand. Um, you get look at, look at back at, at, at repackaging how they put themselves out there. And I say, yeah. we both work in that way in, in different, different, from different ends. But the outcome is that there's more, a happier workforce. People, you know, have more, belief going forwards about what the business is trying to do and actually like a, a nice sort of roadmap for the future really yeah i think you're absolutely right the, as i said people were, were in shock um uh, initially with 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 the whole lockdown situation and then there was a bit of panic what's going to happen next how long is this going to last and then once that started to settle down and they realized the world was never going to end as a result of this they could actually take stock of what they were doing because i know people which were probably commuting sort of two hours one way and then two hours back home every single day and that went out the window so therefore they had more time to think and spend more time with their family and they could think more sort of strategically about what their business is looking to achieve going forwards so it gave, gave them that opportunity to, to re-engineer the business if they wanted to not every business did that because you know they've, they've they've taken stock and think no this is definitely still the course of action we want to take but others have taken a different uh, approach and others have taken a completely different approach uh you know i know certain businesses where they've scrapped their all offices uh, you know office usage i don't think that personally that's the way for, uh, to go but um you know each to their own they've obviously assessed that but i i do believe that we do need offices and workplaces for connect creativity particularly for those of the next generation the younger generation coming through in the early parts of your career, it's those social interactions at work which develop you per, uh, both personally and professionally. And that's where your, the line managers, the directors will see your value and you can actually flourish in whatever you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's hard enough getting kids off devices anyway. I've got two teenage girls, you know, and, and it's, it's, I do work. It's that social skills as well, isn't it? Social skills, yeah. all the, you know, like you said, the opportunity, the idea generation. 
and I, mm. and I guess there is, I guess there's that happy medium for lots of people now of, of the two of being able to work from home and be able to go, well, actually, you know, um, I want to go and walk the dog now, I'm clear my head a bit and then come back to something. I know that I've spent a lot of time just sat looking at the screen and, you know, if you mm -hmm. go out for a walk for half an hour, you come back and, you know, the amount, amount of things I've seen driving around that you suddenly, you know, spurred you onto a different idea yeah. or something. And um, I'm trying to work to sort of five, four and a half day a week or mix it up a bit, really. So, yes, you know, yesterday I did some work in the morning, uh, went mm -hmm. off to the beach in the afternoon, came back in the evening, really happy, had a good day and then did some work in the evening. It's sort of, for me, it's become, you know, it, it's already been a little bit like that, that I can pick and choose being self-employed, but being able to have that flexibility to go, Actually, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it's for, for, particularly for like um, in the creative industry. It's not like I can go, oh, I've got a logo to do this week. I'll book it in tomorrow afternoon and Thursday and hope I'm feeling creative. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No, no. So I, I think for lots of people having that, that option has been a, a key thing that hopefully they all take forward. I think you're absolutely right. And one of the big things now is um, the, you know, the, the Generation X and Y, et cetera, that those, they're more sort of value driven as far as what they, you know, who they want to work for. Whereas probably when I entered into the, the marketplace to, to, to start work, they, you discussed the salary, you just, or the, the hourly rate, and the benefits used to be, okay, you're either going to get X number of days holiday and potentially a, a pension, but now it's changed beyond that. Okay, what does the company stand for? Is it going to chime with my values as well? Because I want to work for an organisation not I can be proud of, I can be, you know, happy to talk about, etc. I think things have changed in that respect. And have it, and me personally, having a what I call a portfolio career now, working for the likes of Clark Wilmot on a on a consultancy basis, working for uh, a furniture a, um, a consult uh, consult consultancy, also I've worked for Somerset Community Foundation. I've done other bits and pieces. It's given me that thought and those those. The, the space to think about what I can do differently um, with with those organisations, which is going to add value. No, that's great. You picked up some good points there about this. Say the the, the, the the younger generation is particularly so mm -hmm. because of social media. You can, you know, it works both ways. One, you can employers can go and check out someone's Facebook profile and see them fall mm -hmm. out of a taxi, which doesn't work in their favour for a job. Yeah. But on the flip side, you can research companies like say, are they? does it look like a great place to work you know are the people happy you know um oh they're great they have a beach day or they have a you know pizza even or something that there's like a you know the personality more of the business has come through it's become a little bit more informal in terms of those channels online and yeah um, I, I think it, I've, I've i've spoken to uh, friends children who before they even start the application for process they'll do research on the company mm. to see do they actually you want to want to you know get to the next stage of starting that application process or submitting an expression of interest or whatever it might be that whereas i probably didn't and probably many of my sort of generation did that at that sort of stage of their career at the very early parts of their career it was okay i've been told this is a good company therefore i will work for this good this good company and not think any more of it because it wasn't part of mine or probably my generation's thought process Hmm. And I think it's, I see more and more companies that I guess traditionally have been more corporate in approach in terms of solicitors, accountants, estate agents. Mm -hmm. I've seen them now really realizing in the fact of just being human and talking about everyday things and, and having those conversations that could be the decision, decision maker for somebody choosing their mm -hmm. business. I went, I, I remember I went to see an accountancy firm and their, their website was very, what do you expect of, you know, a corporate handshake and shop mm. and this. And then when I went to meet them, they were so different. They were, they're all, you could tell they all got on really well. Yeah. There was a good dynamic of the people there. And I, I made some comments and, oh, I look for your Facebook page. And they all looked at each other like, what? And I said, oh, I said, that, that, yeah. you come across for your Facebook page well, the team. I said, you know, what, there's a difference between who you are and, and mm -hmm. what makes you tick and also what you do. Well, we already know what you do, but you're not coming through in terms of, you know, the, the language you're using or the imagery you're using. Um, and it's been so nice to see so many more people having like uh, professional photo shoots or, you know, spending that money to actually showcase themselves in a nice, relaxed way. That's been great on LinkedIn. I've enjoyed seeing that. Yeah, show, show your personality as a business. Show your personality as an individual um, because a lot of businesses proudly display their technical abilities, which is great, which is, which is needed. But it is, you know, I've always said, businesses don't buy from businesses. People buy from people. 
whether it is a consumer good or a business good. It's about those relationships. Long, you know, if you are thinking of a building relationship, you have to have that sort of people to people approach. If you're just straight on a, on a transactional basis, well, we don't need to do that. But then again, I personally think that's short term because you never know where opportunities might lead because I've worked with, um, with, with suppliers, et cetera, and clients uh, at previous organizations and I've built long-term relationships. I've moved on to another organization and I've picked up that relationship. It's, it may be in a slightly different guise, but because we know each other, we trust each other, we don't have to go through that dance of getting to know and then starting all from scratch, as it were. So I think, you know, relationships, developing those personalities is, is absolutely essential. Excellent. There's some really, really good points there, Dale. And um, I'm going to sort of finish up there. But it's been great to catch up with you. Some nice points for us to chat a bit more about uh, another networking event soon. And uh, yeah. you know, I'm glad you've uh, been able to use your experience and your, you know, expertise to as things have changed for the businesses you're working with. It sounds great. And it's, it's yeah. exciting with the environmental side as well and how that will be in the set in the next decade. So, yeah. Great. Well, thanks for your time today. And I look forward yeah, to problems. seeing you soon. All right. Take care. Thank you. Cheers, Paul. Bye. Bye. Bye.